these are the two probability distributions that are gonna that, that are gonna do you good for most of this class. We will cover um, a couple other distributions that are important, um, but for now it's the normal distribution, the bell curve, and the binomial distribution for binary outcomes. Um, the binomial distribution, and I'll tell you this again later, um, is the distribution that describes a so-called Bernoulli trial, um, but it's something where you have a number of independent events, each with the same probability. So the classic example of, of such a Bernoulli trial that is described by a binomial distribution as a coin a coin flipped a certain number of times. So if you flip a coin a thousand times um, and that's one trial and then you repeat that or you have everyone in this room repeat that, flip their coin a thousand times and plot the number of times that it comes up heads for each person who did it, that distribution that you plot is going to be a binomial distribution. So even though it's describing a binary variable, it's still a discrete, or if it's a large enough number of trials, a continuous like um, distribution, if that makes sense. So what you need to know about the normal distribution, to start with, it's symmetric, it's bell-shaped, it's characterized by just two numbers, the mean and the standard deviation. If you know those two numbers, then you know everything about a particular normal distribution. It completely describes the distribution. And here's a few examples. Uh, let's see, in red here, we've got mean zero um, variance, standard deviation squared of 0.2. Then down here in green, the next one also means zero variance of one, so it's wider because the variance is larger. And down here, again, means zero variance of five, so it's really wide. And then over here on the left, we've got a mean of minus two, the peaks at minus two, and a variance of 0. Uh, 0. 0.5, so somewhere between these two. Yes? Um, it depends. It kind of is. Like when it comes to describing a normal distribution, it's pretty typical to describe the variance. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, but, but yeah, when, when you, when you talk about, um, when you talk about distributions, um, of, of a population, like a, something like this, it's pretty typical to use the variance. When we talk about sampling distributions, which won't be till after the exam, we'll usually talk about standard error, um, which is like a standard deviation. But both, both are totally typical and fine. So here's just a couple examples. The, um, the height of people tends to follow a normal distribution. Um, and here's uh, a, I'm not sure which population this is for, this is just hypothetical, but um, we have the mean height, this would be in uh, inches. For women of 65 inches, I guess that would be five foot three and a standard deviation of 3.5. And then for men, a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of four, those would stack up to each other kind of like this. So there's you know, the difference in means and then the difference in, in the standard deviations variance. Um, so, so yeah, here's a question. Within what interval do almost all of men's heights fall? 
probably between about 60 and 80, something like that. So that's uh, 70. That's almost three standard deviations above and below, above and below the mean. And for women's, it's between about 55 and 75. So that's again about three three standard deviations, um, and that's part of part of the empirical rule that I'm going to show you. The empirical rule. It applies to any normal distribution. Um, and it's just, there's nothing like really deep or special about the empirical rule. It's just kind of a handy rule of thumb um, that can uh, allow you to do some calculations easily and maybe in your head. Um, and that is that, that for a random variable that's normally distributed, you'll have about 68% or 0.68 probability within one standard deviation of the mean, 0.95 or 95% plus within plus or minus two standard deviations, and 99.7% or 0.997 probability within three standard deviations above and below the mean. Um, and you'll get, I don't know, it's a popular one for, for, uh, for intro biostat because it allows you to answer a bunch of questions about uh, probabilities from the normal distri distribution without having to be distracted by looking things up in a table. Um, you can, questions that have to do with one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean, you can just do um, more easily using the empirical rule. But you could get by without the empirical rule. If you forgot about it, you could use the table like you're gonna do for other ones. And we'll get to the table. So here's, here's an example back from the, the height of, of women being 65 inches plus with a standard deviation of three and a half inches. Does anyone want to tell me if we're talking about a sample or a population here? Yep. Very good. It's a population because we're using Greek letters. That's exactly right. I would use I would use um, the uh, uh, x bar or something like that, and an s if if this were estimated from a sample. Um, so just from having that, we could estimate that about if it's normally distributed, sixty eight percent of the of women would have a height between sixty one point five and sixty eight point five. So um, 65 plus or minus 3.5, and 95% within plus or minus two standard deviations, and 99.7 within plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean. This, by the way, is that is also can be kind of a handy way of if you have some data, it's it's a rough estimate of whether it's normally distributed or not. Um, if you have 100 data points or something like that, and you go uh, take calculate the mean and the standard deviation, if it's normally distributed, those data points, then they'll follow this empirical rule approximately. It's not a bad way to assess normality. So, Here's, here's just an example of a slightly more complicated, still not too complicated, probability question. What proportion of women are less than 68.5 inches tall? So 68.5 is the mean plus one standard deviation. And this would be, so this would be the area to the left of there. So you can answer this using the empirical rule. You know that there's 68% between minus one and plus one standard deviations. And since there's 68% here, there's 16% on each side outside of that. And we would just add 16 for the left-hand side. So 68 plus 16, that's what? 
So in this case, it might actually, this is maybe a little more complicated than using the, the table that we'll get up to just because you have to add a couple things as opposed to getting the answer directly from the table. But, but it's still handy because you're getting used to the idea of intervals and breaking up um, your distribution into intervals and adding up probabilities. So actually looking at this, you remember that rule about the um, exclusive events and the rule for the union of exclusive events? We're actually considering, we're considering this problem as three exclusive events here. One being height below minus one standard deviation, another one height between minus one and one, and another one height greater than one standard deviation above the mean. So we're splitting all possible heights into these three regions and taking advantage of the fact that because they're mutually exclusive and exhaustive events, probability, let's call this on the left, A, B, and C, probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C adds up to one. 